Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3 where I was just thinking about potential expansion opportunities. Of course, we're not going to be expanding yet. We need to let our infamy drop, but an interesting opportunity would be Denmark. If we look at this, we can see that the Make Protectorate would only cost 18.6 infamy. That is relatively cheap. And in terms of their actual defensive packs here, uh, they've got Brazil and they've got Dahomey. So that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. They are currently in the Great Britain Customs Union, so Great Britain might decide to defend them. That's not a right now sort of thing, obviously. It's, it's an in the future idea, but it's definitely an interesting one. No doubt about that. So for right now, we're working on getting our coal mines and railways and motor industries and steel mills finished up. We want to get that all done, ideally, before steel frame buildings come through, or at least significantly started. So that's the idea here. I would prefer not to queue up too much additional things. We've got our railway in Uzbekia and Kiva right now. A railway in Rostov is maybe not necessary, not necessarily hugely necessary. That, that's a weird way to put that, but it definitely is. <laughs> Market access in Ingria is currently low, as is Moscow. So that does mean a couple of extra railways. Specifically, this is 20 infrastructure. We're probably going to end up needing two in Moscow by the end of this. But I'm going to... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly concerned about timing as of right now. We don't have a lot of time before steel frame buildings come through. Just one year. And this is going to take half of that right there. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily great. We should probably prioritize the steel mills at this time. So the steel mills and the railroads is what we're going to do. We're going to do something like this. We're going to move up railways. And we're temporarily downsizing the motor industry and coal mine production. It's not as important. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to intersperse these steel mills. We really need to get going on the steel mills. We're going to need a lot of steel. There's no doubt about it. So let's get these online. And the question is just how bad is this still going to be when this goes through? We're possibly going to have some shortages of explosives. We'll see what that ends up looking like. But that is certainly a possibility. So then these government administrations can just kind of go in like that. That'll be okay for now. So, this is going to be painful. I think that's very clear. Gold has been discovered in the Yukon Territory. Cool. That's gold fields for right now. So, no gold, gold mines going in there just yet. But that's okay. For the time being, we're just going to get this started. We gotta get some steel mills going here. And eventually, we'll get these railways done, too. That would be good. There's a revolution in North Germany. Okay. That's definitely interesting to note. For the moment, we are deeply concerned about switching to steel frame buildings, though. This is going to go to 142k of a change. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a lot. And also, explosives are going to be expensive, as is glass. So, for the moment, I'm not going to put a huge amount of work into glass works. Uh, let's see here. In Ingria? Or in Moscow? Uh, I think in Kazan is where I'm going to put it. That'll be fine for now. I'm going to put three. Actually, I'm going to do five. Five in Kazan. And then explosives factories as well. In Kuban? Sure. That seems reasonably fine. I'm going to put five there as well. So this is going to take a while to get through. No doubt about that. I'm going to move up things. Specifically the railways. And those are still highest priority. But it's going to be something kind of like this. Okay, we need to get these done, of course. We're not going to have this fully done by the time we get steel frame buildings, I'm pretty sure. So that is, of course, an issue. We can also bump up our innovation cap by about two universities. We are in a bit of a rush right now, of course. But we could put these in, in, say, eastern Afghanistan. Something like that. They only take 17 weeks to build. I say only. We're going to have problems. There's no doubt about that. We are paying down our debt, though. We can run a deficit for a little bit while we build through that. And it does bear noting, construction is going to be tremendously sped up by going to steel frame buildings. 
I want to take a quick look here. We're currently going to be producing 200 and or 251 construction, right? This is going to produce a little bit over 420 construction. It, I think it's going to produce like 451 or something like that. No, 461 is what I would expect. And the state construction efficiency is going to go up too, so it'll be a little more than that. It's going to be at least a doubling, I think, of our current construction speed. So that would be good. That would mean that we will make our way through these things fairly quickly. Now, I do want to move up at least one steel mill here. Organized sports has been unlocked. Okay, cool. That's reasonably fine for the moment. And getting our, our work done with these railways relatively quickly is high priority. No doubt about that. So currently, we see a transportation shortage in Uzbekia and in Kiva. Uh, they're kind of flickering around. That's fine. Market access in the Yukon Territory is low as well. So we're going to need to get employees here. Okay. I'm guessing all of the employees went to go work in the gold fields. I mean, that's only at 14% capacity. So there is that. Pop growth is at 0.5 annually. Nobody's really migrating in there, which is sad. Northern Canadian terrain. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely fine for now. So let's get these universities finished up to recap our innovation cap. And these railways will get done relatively quickly. 12 weeks on our railway in Ingria. Yeah, it's... We're going to be pretty behind on our steel frame buildings. There's no doubt about it. But we'll switch over as soon as we can, regardless. If we have to bump up taxes, we can, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Belgium is improving relations with us. That's a good sign. I mean, it's not absolutely ideal. It's not like the French Commune or something, but it'll do. So our universities are finishing now. We'll also see steel frame buildings in about a week. So there's that done. Our railways are going to be done shortly, and then we're going to be working on our resources for steel frame buildings. We still need more coal mines, but there it is. Steel frame buildings right there. So at this point, we're swapping. It's going to be painful. Yes, absolutely it is. That bumps us to 456 for now. I think that's going to still change a little bit as we get changed over. So next up, I would like to go into probably production here and get something along the lines of the electric arc process. That'll take five years. But we'll get that started. Okay, so we are doing a lot more construction. Minus 55k is not so bad. Keep in mind about half of that came from our investment pool, which will eventually go away. Our investment pool will get eaten up over time, and it will eventually go away. It'll be dropping relatively quickly, in fact, at 79.7k. 70, so this number will get considerably worse by about 80k, which is about where we expected it to be. In the meantime, of course, we're going to need to get some things done here. Now we can survey a skyscraper site. I'm not convinced we want to do that. Minus 500 bureaucracy is probably not great right now. So we'll not do that for the moment. We're going to get these railways done very, very soon. But the investment pool will not hold out forever. That is certainly noted. Glass, coal, and steel are all considered expensive. And we're getting started on our explosives right now. More oil has been discovered. That's good. Wait a sec. With electric arc process, that's going to require an electricity input. And we don't have electrical generation. So before we get the electrical arc process, we should get rotary valve engine into electrical generation, then the electric arc process. That would make more sense. We can also go for steel railway cars, which wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world. I think for the moment, we're not going to be too concerned about that. So rotary valve engine will be a useful thing to have for sure. That will bump up our requirements of coal, but we can definitely scale our coal production. So that should be reasonably fine for right now. We're finishing up our railways and all of our factories, explosive factories, are now being worked on. That looks good. But our investment pool is down to 1.5 million. So that is definitely painful. No doubt about that. No issues here in terms of market access or in terms of transportation costs. Well, there might be some transportation cost issues, but there's 
no transportation input goods shortages. I'm also glad to see that we don't have glass or steel input goods shortages. I do think that these explosives factories are maybe a little bit premature. But I think it's broadly fine. We're down to 1.1 million in our investment pool. And as I said, it's dropping fast. This isn't shocking. Not shocking in the slightest. But we are constructing so much more quickly. It is about double. It's not quite double, but it's very close to double the speed. So that's good. And we definitely need to get these productions online here. So additional coal mines are going to be necessary. More oil is being discovered. And we're going to want to shift from coal to oil as we go forward. But we don't really have the tech for that right now. Let's get a steel mill finished and we can get that online. We're starting to work on these glass works as well. So that looks relatively good. In terms of our private constructions, we do have a steel mill there. We have a coal mine. We have a second coal mine, a third coal mine, and a bunch of glass works in here as well as some steel mills. Yeah, that looks fine. So that looks absolutely great. However, our investment pool is very nearly empty at this time. This is not shocking. I want to be clear about that. We knew that this was going to be slightly painful. We might need to bump up our taxes a bit. I would rather not. I think for the moment we can probably deficit spend. I'm not too concerned about deficit spending right now. Our infamy is at 31.6, so we've got lots of time before our infamy bottoms out. So I'm not too concerned about that at all. I think that we definitely deficit spend, make our way through our glassworks and steel mills. The explosives factories will be done soon. Explosives are not tremendously expensive. I do want to check in on the market price of them. Okay, so here's coal, here's fine art, steel, engines, yeah. Explosives are a little expensive, but we should have prioritized the glass over the explosives, for sure. And probably the steel mills over them, too. But that's okay. You live and you learn. So minus 147k. This is about where we expect to be. We're at maximizing our investment pool transfer right now. And that is certainly painful. No doubt about that. So our gold reserves are going to be dropping here. And getting the glassworks online is going to help a lot. Glass is actually more expensive than steel. And we know that there's a bunch of glassworks in our private constructions as well. So I'm not going to be too concerned right now about getting additional glassworks done beyond these five. The steel mills will eventually get finished. And then coal would be a concern, but we do have a few coal mines queued up here, motor industries. It's all reasonably okay. How are we doing on our unrealized taxes? 15.4k. That's not a huge amount. Noted. Combined with our interest, that's about 30k. So yeah, minus 100k is painful. No doubt about that. But let's bring down the price of glass, bring down the price of steel. Both of those will significantly help. The current price of steel is expensive, 65.8. Okay, yeah. We can see that our existing steel mills did absorb some of that demand, but by no means all of it. Taking a look at the glass, if we go in here, yeah, okay, that changed on us. If we go in here, yeah, it absorbed a little bit, but certainly not a lot. We've got a deficit of respect going on from the Nihilus here. Very rude. How far can this the, can the Nihilus depravity go? Well, they're going to be timed out pretty soon, so that's not really the biggest of concerns. Our glassworks will be done in just a couple of weeks here, and then our steel mills will follow. So that all looks relatively good. I think there's no major issues there. Persia is now loyal to us, which is great. And I would like to get the Sikh Empire under our control, of course, but that's going to take a little bit in terms of the infamy. I'd also like to get Poland and Ukraine under our control. Those would be absolutely great. That would get us what we released at the beginning of the game back. Not really back. We never had it, right? So that would be absolutely fine. We would love to get them. Glassworks is finishing up. Italy is siding in it with the French Commune against the radical French Commune. So this is happening again. Okay, have fun with that, France. We're not really in a position. Where did we get all this bureaucracy from? Oh, our, our event timed out. Yeah, that's fine. Understood. 
so that will boost up our taxes somewhat. But our main problem right now is our construction goods, right? If we look at our current construction goods cost, 170k spent on steel, 115k on glass, 45.4k on tools. We should probably make some tooling workshops too, now that I look at that. So let's get some tooling workshops going here in... Looks like Samara would be okay. I'm going to queue up five of them. So we'll get those going. We've got steel mills working in the background as well. So that looks absolutely good. We'll get that all completed. And in terms of law changes, we're currently on interventionism. Would we be better off on laissez-faire here? Capitalists and shopkeepers would contribute to the investment pool. Whereas here, in interventionism, who all is contributing to the investment pool? I think we might be better off here. We can still subsidize infrastructure, and we can subsidize trade centers and power plants. So that's the only things we really want to subsidize. This will move a lot of our private construction allo allocation, or rather a lot of our construction into private construction. But it will also reduce our loan interest rate, which isn't the biggest deal, but it would be helpful. This will radicalize the trade unions and the rural folk if we do this, but they're both marginalized. The big gain here is that this is going to get us a lot more investment pool contribution. But the downside is we're not going to be able to control as much of our construction. So there is that. So if we look at our investment pool contribution here, All of these buildings are reinvesting to the investment pool. Okay, noted. So that's reasonably fine. I think we're not going to change over at this time. What we need to do, of course, is increase our income and reduce our expenditures, right? That's, it's easy to say that, but it is what we need to do. And we're working on that. We're down to 116K here. We can see that our, our construction goods cost has held relatively steady. So that's interesting. But this is definitely going to be building up a lot of debt. We could bump up our taxation to here. And I'm going to do that. I don't like to, but I'm going to do it. We'll see some drops of our standard of living, which is definitely not ideal. I want to be clear about that. We could also potentially put in a consumption tax here. What do we have a consumption tax on? I guess we could do sugar. Sure. So that's all going to be very painful for our citizenry, right? But for the moment, at least until we get some of these costs under control, I feel like it is necessary. We have a transportation shortage in Earl, and we can definitely construct there. So we'll get that going, just a single railway there. It'll only take 23 weeks, no big deal. Our tooling workshops will be done in five. We're currently positive, very slightly, and we're going to be looking to grow our surplus here and drop back down our taxation levels. That's the idea, anyway. So, how much do we need to be making to drop this down? 60k. Okay, yeah, that's that's kind of a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That is kind of a lot. But we definitely need to bring down these pricings. So, that is good. Now, coal is still a little bit expensive. Glass is as well. Have we finished up all of that private construction of glass? Mostly, yes. Okay. So we're going to need to continue to work through this. I think I'm going to leave this as it is for the moment until we finish up this motor industry, which will actually not be all that long. We'll make our way through that fairly quickly. So that looks solid. At this point, we're paying about 20k per month in, or rather per week in interest. And that is definitely an increase due to us running those deficits for a little bit there. That is painful. And we're definitely seeing our standard of living dip down as well. This is going to dramatically increase our number of radicals, and that's not good, but here we are. This might be a good argument for enacting landed voting at this time. Would anyone be... Mm, nobody would actually be radicalized by this. You know what? I think we gotta do it. 
We need to do something about our radicalism. And yes, this does drop our authority. I'm not too concerned about that right now. We'll leave our authority where it's at for the moment. And that all looks good. So we're going to finish up that coal mine. That's great. And I want to get this motor industry completed. That's the goal. So I want to get all of this built through. Currently, we're at 18.6k in unrealized taxes. That's noted. Our government administrations do need to be built. We're only 86 weeks away from having this construction queue completely finished. Which is great. This is much, much better at this point. And our motor industries here is two weeks away. So that all looks great. Yeah, our constructions are looking absolutely fine here. The Nihilist movement is going to time out very soon. Looks like in just a couple of months. That's also absolutely wonderful. There is a political movement to preserve autocracy. But we're still going to pass landed voting. We're going to start making some moves towards democracy for the moment. Just because that's very much where Victoria pushes you. Absolutely. This does need to be addressed, clearly. Okay. So we're going to push through landed voting eventually. This will drop our current legitimacy by 36, but we'll have to hold an election. So we'll see what that ends up looking like for our next legitimacy. For now, this will be fine. I would love to get the landed gentry out of their, like, constant power. It's not bad to have them cycling through power, but to have them in their constant position, it does limit us a lot in laws. So that's for sure. We're currently number three in prestige, despite currently sacking our prestige. So that is definitely interesting oh. to note. <sighs> yeah, additional migration attraction in Alaska for upper strata pop radicalism sounds good. We're now working on this motor industry. That seems great. I'm actually going to move this government administration down and put all of this into that motor industry. That looks good. Cool. So we're almost done with those steel mills, and we're definitely seeing our balance grow at this point. That looks good. We do need to deal with additional coal and glass, and there's a transportation shortage now in Turkmenia. Interesting. Oh, uh, nihilism is gone? Sure. Academics becoming more loyalist might not be a problem. However, there is production research speed here. That would only be for five years, though. I think we're just going to get the Loyalists. We need all the Loyalists we can get our hands on. And that's not going to be a lot, but we do need a lot of Loyalists. So we need a railway in Turkmenia. No doubt about that. We'll get that going. That's going to be 24 weeks. It's a slight reduction in construction efficiency. Okay, that's fine. We're working our way through these government administrations at this time. 85 weeks currently in our construction queue, and we're going to need additional coal and glass production. Ironclads are also currently expensive. Okay, I want to check in on our military shipyards here. We have one of these shipyards making ironclads. That's this one. I'm going to bump up the shipyards there by one. I'm also going to add in here five coal mines. Okay, this progresses to consideration. Nice. Five coal mines. That's going to hit our economy of scale cap here, correct? Correct it is. So shift work is not necessarily a bad thing after our rotary valve engine. So we could absolutely go to shift work and then go for electrical generation, then electric arc process. Something like that to boost up our economy of scale level cap. There we go. So five coal mines. I do want these motor industries and railway being worked on as a priority, but five coal mines there, and then we can get a couple of glassworks going as well. This would be best off in Moscow in theory, but I'm going to do it in Ingria since we already have some economy of scale going on here. I'm going to build five there as well. Once again, moving up our motor industries and railway. Something like that. Okay, so we'll get all of that going. And in the face of revolution, huh? There's no reason to believe this is credible. We don't need lower strata pop getting radical. That's absolutely not what we need right now. There's a lot of radicalism, particularly down here. There's the rotary valve engine. That was very fast. Okay, sounds good. So at this point, we do have a bunch of rotary valve engine production methods that we can put in here. And this is going to boost coal requirements. Noted. We absolutely are going to need a lot of coal here. 
Yes, do that anyway. I'm aware. So for our arms industries, rotary valve engines. For our artillery foundry, rotary valve engines. For munitions plants, rotary valve engines. Now, do we want our urban centers to start thinking about doing, like, covered markets? Probably not, I think. I think we're broadly okay on that front. Okay. Anything in the rural areas? Yes, we can absolutely put in barbed wire fences. Do it. That looks good. And let's see here. Fishing wharves. Yeah, that's all fine. No problem there. Naval bases can come down here, and we're going to do that. That's a very small cost, so that's absolutely fine. Now, coal mines I'm going to move up because we absolutely are going to have at least expensive coal, if not a shortage. So we're going to get going on that, and that'll be fine. In fact, we probably want to get another at least five coal mines going here. We're already at our economy of scale cap in Moscow until such a time as shift work finishes. So we should probably bring something like Earl up to the economy of scale cap. That might create some transportation shortages there. We'll see how that goes. But we're going to be building a lot of coal mines because we need them. I'm going to move up these coal mines in Moscow first and the railway in Turkmenia. Do we think we're going to need a railway in Earl? Honestly, probably. Let's get that queued up just as a preemptive strike here. That'll be fine. Cool. So we'll get that going. Coal is going to be very expensive. No doubt about that. But we will work our way through these constructions relatively swiftly. So that all looks good. That puts us at 108 weeks for our construction queue, which is, you know, not ideal. We want to get through this construction queue and not just be chilling on these unrealized taxes, right? But, I mean, this will ultimately be a significant boon for us. We're seeing our GDP growing relatively sharply at this point. We're number four worldwide in GDP, and that's decent, but it's not where we want to be. We absolutely need to continue to work on development. It is about time to put a cut in here, though, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to work on getting our finances to the point where we can cut taxes again. That would be good. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Kintogen, Ali Lee, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.